And it is a joy to welcome God's people on this beautiful Sabbath morning here at the Community Worship Center of Seventh-day Adventists in New York City. We want to welcome you to Sabbath School, those in our congregation who have joined us personally. And for those online who have joined us, we want to welcome you. Stay with us, and I'm sure you will enjoy the study of the Word of God as we seek to go through together today. This quarter, we are looking at the crucibles. The crucibles is the amount of trouble sometimes that come our way. Although we are Christians, we gave our lives to the Lord, and uh, you say, well, that should give me some amount of peace. But sometimes it's the other way around. More conflict, more war, more trouble. Children give more trouble, and so on. And so you say, Lord, why? But as we go through this quarter's lesson, we are seeing that the Lord permits some things to happen in our Christian lives for a purpose. The one good thing about all of that is that the Lord is leading. I praise the Lord for that. If you allow him, he will lead. But if you don't, he will simply allow you to have your own way. God does not force himself upon anyone. If you want him, he wants you. So we are looking into the crucibles that comes the Christian way this quarter. Today we are studying under dying like a seed. Dying like a seed dies. That's what we're studying about this, this week. And our memory verse taken from John 12, verse 24, from the New King James Version, Jesus speaking, let's all say it together, most assuredly, I say unto you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains how alone but if it dies it produces much grain and uh, in the normal King James Version where it says most assuredly Jesus would say verily verily I say unto you uh, if a grain of seed falls to the ground and dies it remains alone but if it dies, it produces much grain. Our loving Father, we dare not open the Bible unless we consult you. It is your love letter to your children. And so now, Lord, as we take another look at the pages of Holy Writ, please come by, Lord, and grant us a blessing. Bring back to our minds the things we've studied this week. And as we discuss, may we do so with an aim to be of one mind. We ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, the Lord, for those of us who have, will permit the Lord to lead us, Ellen White says, you have to permit God, and also the Bible. God will not impose himself upon you and all of God's promises here are relative to his children those who will allow the Lord to lead them his children Christians this this subject here is not for a bread basket from those out in the world who comes well give me Lord give me Lord give me give me give me and that's all they have in mind that's not what God is all about here. God is saying, I'm talking to my people who will allow me to lead them. It says, if you are going to allow me to lead you, 
First thing you're going to have to do is that you're going to have to learn to die to self. Basically, we are selfish. Me, my, and I. First. That's basic. That's us. That's the humanity in us. But Jesus is saying here, if we must be successful in the Christian life, we have to go the way the Lord is leading us. And the first thing that you've got to do is you have to learn to die to self. First, that seed must fall. Then second, there is a waiting period in the ground. And third, it dies. And when it dies, what happened? It spring forth, burst forth into plants and another plant and another plant and another plant. And it becomes what the Lord wants it to be. If we are to be of service to God, we need to submit to God's will, don't we? If we are to be of service to the Lord, first of all, we've got to recognize his leading. Sometimes you do not know where he lead you. The psalmist David in, in uh, Psalms 23 he says, The Lord lead us by the still waters. In some cases he lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. The Lord leads us various ways. Here we are studying the day if we are to be, sub, to, to be of service to God. We must be submissive to the will of God. Self must die. Number one, it's got to go down. That seed's got to go down. It's got to die. That is the recommendation of the Bible. And uh, through our sufferings, sometimes the sufferings will come. Well, you say, Lord, I have given my life to you. I am living a Christian life. Why all of this struggle? Why all of this unusual stuff happening in my life? Husband giving trouble, wife giving trouble, the children giving trouble. They should be with us in Sabbath school this morning, but they're somewhere standing on the corner up there and somewhere, and uh, the pain is there and the struggle. Why, why the struggle? But then our lesson teaches today that uh, through our sufferings, through our crucibles, God is helping us to die to ourselves. We must die to self, and the Lord helps us to die to self. Why? He sends us the crucibles. He sends some stuff along your way. And when it comes, don't throw up your hand, don't give up. Just know that the Lord has permitted these things to come your way. Because you have, you are, you have permitted him to lead your life. To be available to God, our lesson is saying we need to die to self. Are we together? That is what the Bible teaches. Elder? Thank you. No, from, um, we have such a wonderful lesson here. We have... The, everything flows in this lesson. And if we notice that Sunday says submission, Monday's dying before knowing God's will. So everything flows. Mm. Tuesday, after dying, we become alive through Christ. Mm. And now we come to Tuesday's lesson that states um, here, willingness to sub, willingness to listen. And that comes from all that's mentioned in Monday, um, Sunday and Monday. 
submission. We as God's children must be able to sub, after we accept Jesus Christ, we must submit ourselves to him. And there must be a willingness, mm. a willingness to listen. Yes, sir. You know, as we come under this roof every Sabbath, you know, we, sometimes I'm sure Pastor Goff is up here sometimes and you look down and you see people involved in their own personal agenda, mm -hmm. forgetting the, the main reason why we are here. And uh, we need to listen to what is going on. Because we, we are here for a purpose, for a reason. God brought us here to listen to him. Let them build me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. So we are here to listen. There must be a willingness to listen. So therefore, we come to today's lesson that deals with um, the story of a little young man who was born to a lady who never had any, never thought she would have a chance to have a child. And one thing she did was to give him over to, give him to Jesus Christ. She gave him, and that person was Samuel. My, my, my. No, she gave him to, the, the, to God at, that such, at such a tender age. Can you imagine somebody having their, their little babies and decide that they, when he was born and when the fullness of time comes, I'm going to give him to the Lord. I'm going to take him to the temple. Imagine you have a three, four, five-year-old, and... When he's about to talk, you're going to take him to the temple of God, that he's going to live there. Mm. That was the lady. Yes, sir. That was her, Hannah. Yes. She decided to give him to, to Jesus Christ. Yes. But here it is. In giving him to God, this young man, because of what was cultivated in him before, one of the traits and one of his habits was just to listen. Listen. We come here every Sabbath. We must, as the writer further down states, we must put ourselves in neutral. Put yourselves in neutral because you're here to listen. Don't get yourself in gear where you're going to think about many other things. Just put yourself in neutral and listen to the word of God so you can learn. So Samuel, listen to God. He listened. And if you can, we all know the story. When he, these voices, and it was the, the priest Eli who told him, when you hear it again, you just say, speak, Lord. And that is what, again, you, you, you know, being a, a, a person of God, you must be able to take advice. You must take advice from someone else whom you trust within these walls. Um, Elder, yes. I want to stop you there a little bit because we feel so good about um, Samuel listening. Oh, he was so obedient to God as a little boy. He listened. And you grew up that way in the temple, listening and following God's lead. So why, where did you stop listening hmm. so that your sons fell into such a, a dump? Yes. Because if you were such a good listener, where did you go wrong as with the, those boys? As the, as, the, as the church elder or as the pastor, you know, that's a good question. So what the lesson does here is to compare and contrast Samuel's action to the, the sons of Eli. As I stated before, the sons of Eli, they grew up in the temple too. And, and, and see what happened? They never listened. I'm not sure if they did not listen, but the Bible states that Eli was kind of soft. He was soft on his son. And they, they grew up to the point that they, they, they think, they accept the idea that they could do anything because they would get away with anything from their father. Mm -hmm. You know, this in church here, we must remember that as God gave us children to train and to bring them up in the stature and understanding of God, so we must train our children to understand and to know that there's a God that they must listen to. And there are things that they must obey. So contrastingly, Samuel grew up in the church, grew up right there with those brothers, but they never influenced him in any wrongdoing and that was the good thing about it when you come here it's as the lesson states get yourself in neutral listen obey the voice of god instead of doing like what the priest uh, the sons of the priest eli did they did everything that was wrong in the sight of god my, my, my. yes i think god. i think uh elder that brings to my mind here something something's powerful uh 
the husband in the home is the head of the home. That's how God set it up. He should be the priest at home. But from this experience, do you not notice that if the head of the home is not responding to God as our leading, as he should, the Lord will bypass the head of the home as he did in, in the case of Eli. The Lord should have spoken to Eli. Eli is the high priest. Yes. But the Lord bypassed Eli, he bypassed Aphna and Phinei, those two brothers, and went directly to little Samuel. <laughs> so sometimes the Lord will bypass those whom he has set to lead and go right to the source, the little ones who the Lord know will obey him. Right, it's true. Amen. As you mentioned that, I, I remember growing up, I grew up in a church, but I was never, sometimes I, I was not a willing person to go to church. And I remember in the Sabbath morning, and when Sabbath morning come, we used to live about a mile and a half, two miles, but my father had a little old car. And uh, I would pretend like I would walk to church. Oh, wow. I was going to walk, but my father would tell me that I, I'm not going to leave you in this house. You have to get ready. Yes, sir. And I was hurt. But, you know, when the person that is in charge put their foot down, as they would say, then you know that, you know, it's a sign of leadership. We all read the story and know what happened further down. Where, when it came to sacrificing the disobedience um, that they carried out there, and what happened in the end. So it's a long, don't, don't forget that you should read that story and see what the children, the, the children of Eli did. It said the Holy Spirit does not only pass information, as you said, because Jesus told us when he was living that there's going to be a comforter who will come. So the Spirit speaks to us within these walls. And it not only speaks to us, we must listen. We must all, it, it teaches, it corrects. So your ear inside here today must be neutral. Neutral not in the sense that you're not going to listen, but you must be neutral to listen to the word of God. Don't let anything mess up your attention today in listening to, to Jesus, the word. So that is telling us, uh, Elder, we need to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Exactly. So that I know when he is telling me to do something. Because the devil tells you to do some things to you, you know. No? Huh? Right, right. The Spirit of God tells you something, the devil tells you to do. But how would I know the difference? Uh, how do I know when the Spirit of God is speaking or when the devil is suggesting something to my mind? Pastor, but there I is a relationship that you develop. Because as Ella said before, um, Samuel was there, Eli's kids were there. Um, as far as I'm concerned, oh, they're all Eli's um, children. Samuel is his child too because he's raising him. And he said to um, Samuel, when you hear the voice again, say, speak, Lord, right? Your servant hear it. So there was the, he knew that there was a relationship between God and Samuel. But his two sons, it's sad for me that he was such a good priest, yet his two sons never really made it. So we can all be in the church. Mm -hmm. And as you say, we may be bypassed because we are not developing that relationship that we need to have with God. So we better be very careful. Um, so, so the question is, did Eli fail? Was it that he did not you know, do his part with the children? Are we responsible when we, your children get to a certain age in life and they make their own conscious decision? Wow. Where, where, where somewhere along the way did Eli went wrong? The Bible clearly does know that he failed to carry his children when they were doing certain things. But I believe that the, the foundation was laid with them. Um, because they did not offer up strange fire mm -hmm. until a certain age. Was the opportunity presented itself before? Maybe. So right here, they, they too, that's why they, they were killed and Eli still speared. It, it may have thought that when 
when Samuel, when he came to Eli, Eli still had that connection with God. Mm -hmm. That's why he could say to him, listen, go back. And when, he, when you hear the voice again, because he knows that that's the voice of God, right. mm -hmm. then, then say, speak, Lord. Because, and hear the term that he used to, to, to Samuel, because thy servant, hear it. This reminds me of Jesse and the sons. And it bypass all the older brothers. We mm. said they were the ones who yes, take on the mantle. Yes, sir. But God has his plan. Mm -hmm. And God's plan will always prevail. Amen. We need to listen. Exactly. Amen. Right. So that closing that section, time. If we refuse to listen in church, it lessens states to us and tells us clearly that we may become a stumbling block inside here. Yes, sir. And we have to be very careful. But if we just listen, we will grow strong spiritually in the Lord. Oh, yes, yes. So we must listen yes, in order yes. to get rid of selfishness. We move on to Wednesday, self-reliant. No, when we do not listen, you see, this is how the lesson flows now. When we do not listen, you see what happened here? When we become a person who becomes selfish. Yes. Self-reliant may be a good word in sense, in a sense, but in this case here, it is not good. When it is used, um, in the, in the way the lesson states here. We go straight to, to Edwards mentioned Saul. He was good. In the beginning, he was such a, he was appointed or anointed by the priest to be the king of Israel. And he, he was a very good man. But as, we, as time move on, we notice that changes start to occur. We're in church here again, I, I mentioned it. We come here as, you know, good person, and we allow ourselves to be distracted. And sometimes we think we are great. Sometimes we allow things to get to our head. Maybe that's what happened to old Saul as he developed, and he developed that, that nature where he saw God working for Israel so many times. And for some reason, he thought more or less that he had something to do with it, but he did not. He never, he wasn't the main reason. If, if we notice here, when we accept God as our savior, we must ultimately obey him. As Proverbs 3, 5, 6 tells us, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways, you must acknowledge him. So Saul developed this nature where he, you know, he started to become a bit self-reliant. And his faith began to, if you remember the story when um, Samuel told him to go down to Gilgal and wait on, wait on him there. But sometimes we are told, we are given certain instructions. Are we in, God tells us to wait, wait on certain things, but we become impatient. It's mentioned all over in the Bible where people decided not to wait on God, but they take things into their own hand. Um, Elder, before you go on, yes. something is coming to me. I remember Peter, when Jesus called him. And he started walking on the water. Yes. At some point, he started to feel, you know, like he was all that was him walking on the water. And when he lost focus, mm -hmm. taking his eyes off Jesus, mm -hmm. that's when he started to sink. Because he started to rely on himself. Now, oh, yes, I'm defying gravity. I'm mm -hmm. walking on water. Very often... That is what happens to us, and it happened to Eve, because she thought she could dance with the devil and still win. Very often we think so. Oh, I can, I can go to the party. I, I won't drink. I won't smoke. I'm strong. And before you know it, mm -hmm. you're drinking and smoking and doing other things. So as you said, we need to stop relying on ourselves. Self-reliance is not a bad phrase on its mm -hmm. own. But in most cases, when we depend on ourselves, we fall into a rut. Yes. Mercy. Right. But uh, Elder, Elder Chana, mm -hmm. Saul was the king. He was the king. He was the big king. <laughs> Why couldn't he do what he wanted to do? Hmm. Well, we all know that he, he, was the, he was a king that was anointed by the priests, as stated by God. So in those days, we know they, Israel must know that they, are, they, must be, they were totally reliant on the leadership of God. So he knew that he was a king. So he, knew, he should know better that he must depend totally on God for everything that 
is to come Israel's way. So, so pastor say he is, um, he is the king. He, he was the, the king set up by the people. Because the people were the one asked for a king. And God, they were never supposed to have a king, an earthly king. And even when they asked for it, and God says, you know, because at one point, if you remember, Samuel was uh, discouraged in terms of they asking. He said, no, you don't, get, you don't get that way. It is not you they rejected. They rejected me as king. So even though they set up the earthly king here, they were still to rely on God, and that's where they failed. They failed to rely on the true king. Right. Yeah. It's like you have the shepherd in the church, the pastor. They are the, like the under-shepherd, but our true shepherd is Jesus. Amen. I learned from this part of my lesson, beloved, God is very careful in the things he asks us to do. Meticulous in, in what he wants us to do. And uh, here it is. Saul, being king over Israel, told himself, well, I had the right. I can do what I want to do. I don't have to wait until Samuel mm -hmm. comes. And so it cost him his life. Wow. Mm -hmm. But here it is. God has given us his Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And he's very specific about these Ten Commandments. He says in the fourth commandment, he says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Not Sunday, but Saturday, his Sabbath, and God is not going to let up an inch. He wants us to keep the Sabbath holy. Just as how he said, Saul, you do not offer sacrifices. The print, the, the, the high priest, Offer the sacrifice, not you. So it is, don't do God any favors. We just need to do just what he says we are to do. Yes. Amen. And to, just to close off on Wednesday, it's, it may not be, um, um, brought, be, be brought out in the, the lesson that much, but if we notice the difference between Jonathan, the son of, of Saul, to the, 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 the sons of Eli, here we have a son of a king who he, he, he Saul must have been giving advice to Jonathan. But in the end, we notice that Jonathan became someone who would, you know, he establishes his own relationship with God in the end. And uh, this is how we, you know, as, as children, we come up, as earlier has mentioned, past that age, sometimes we, we think that when we think that we should take no more advice from our, kid, um, from our parents, we must also know that we must develop this nature whereby we must seek God in all things. I'm going to close here. Amen. Before, just one thing. And we, we never, never trust your feeling mm. in making decisions. Mercy, mercy. Because your feeling comes and it goes. I feel this way today and tomorrow I'm not feeling like that. So you must always go by what Pastor mentioned before, and that is the principle yes, that governs us is the law of God. Amen. And if you stay within God's law, then you will never go wrong. Yes, sir. Amen. So um, before I go into Thursday, there are times when children have to disobey their parents. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Well, this is right. So only when the right when it's along the line that God wants that children should obey their parents because if Jonathan had obeyed and watched everything that his father did I don't know where it would be which is should be the other way around for Eli and his children if they had paid attention to him and you know do what he wanted them to do they would not have died like that and that's why Eli was saved so substitutes this is a big one we substitute God for so many things in trying to get to God. It's so confusing the way we do it. Instead of going to God, you know, the way God creates us, he creates us to want him. And very often when we feel the need for something, we feel there's a void, we feel an emptiness. We try to fill it with other things. 
and we keep filling it with things. There's a song that says, try everything. And if everything fails, try Jesus. Mm. I used to sing that song so much. And then I said to myself, what? Why would I try everything? Maybe I don't even live to try Jesus. Because maybe the last thing I tried is going to be to my death. And there are two types of death. One that the devil gives, you never rise again. And one that God gives, new life comes out of it. So when we begin to substitute things for God, we begin to walk on a very slippery path. Because if we feel the need for love of God, and we go out as, as women looking for love from different men, we could end up with diseases. We could end up with all kinds of things. For young people, they're looking for love. They look in the wrong places. They end up in jail. They end up in all kinds of places. But if we just do the right thing, end up in church, end up in Jesus' arms, we'll never, ever go wrong. But it's easier said than done, Elder. We often say, try Jesus first. But we never really follow the steps in helping people to follow Jesus or helping ourselves to follow Jesus because we don't have it. We have to ask Jesus to help us to know how to follow him. He's the only one who can do it. But we have to build that relationship with him and get to know him. Yes, Elder. And that is why when sometimes, you know, we all have problems sometimes we develop, you know, some things that we can't deal with. And people say that they deal with the problems in different and different ways. Some people deal with it in eating, overeating. Some people watch television and some people just disappear from one another, stay quiet. You know, so, you know, as you talk about substitute, you know, all these are mentioned. But when we have problems, you know, these are no substitutes that we should develop in order for us to get out of these problems. Amen. So there are some people, you don't see them at church, and they'll say, oh, you know, I was dealing with some things. Um, that's why I didn't come to church, but I'm back now. Now, what were you doing while you were away from church and away from God? Because you're saying, you know, I didn't really talk to him. I didn't pray. I didn't do anything. I was just dealing with these things. We were not created to deal with our problems on our own. And that's why it will kill us. We were created to go to God with our problems. He said, cast your burdens on me. When you cast something, you know you cast a net, if you watch fishermen, they just throw it. You don't take your time and say, here I'm giving you a problem. You just throw it at Jesus. In Jamaica we say, you fling it or you dash it. Right? So he will catch it because he's able. So don't worry about it. Just give it to him. But we don't do that. We hold on to it and we suffer. And that's the reason why we sin. That's a sin. To hold back from giving it to God. I think the, the key, one of the key um, uh, in, in, on the Thursday is um, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Where it says that um, not by might, not mm. by power. But is by my spirit, says the Lord, in line with what you are saying. Um, it, is, it is not in our own strength or effort. And the key here is by the spirit of God. And when, you, when, we, when we always stay you know, with that mindset, knowing that whatever it is, it is not in my human strength. God expects you to do things, but you need to rely on him, the source who empower you to accomplish these things. So here, the, um, the, the, on, the, on the Thursday, where it says substitute. We, no matter how you try to do it, if you're going to substitute it you know, to, to replace God, mm. you're going to fail. Amen. So we need, we need to always remind ourselves that God should be the beginning, in the midst of it, exactly. and at the end of it. Amen. Don't leave him out of it. Because he's not going to always take the problem away from us. Because with Zechariah, um, with Zerubbabel, he did not take away the stress. You have to go through it. Because we talk about crucibles, right? When you go through it, you come out better. Gold tried in fire comes out pure. So stop running away from the struggle. 
like the, the, the three Hebrew boys, they did not jump up, try to jump out of the fire. They invited Christ into the fire with them. So he will not always take the problem away, but if we rely on him and not substitute him for something else, he will make things happen. So um, lastly, to close off, we must submit to God. Oh, yes. That word submission is so hard for wives to submit to their husbands. Oh, he's not, he's not my boss. Why should I submit? Really? Wives should submit to their husbands. The husband will not abuse the wife, but she must submit. Just like we must submit to God right? We must sit at his feet. We must listen. We must come to him with a desire to, to, to worship him, to, to listen to him. Again, we're going back to the word listen. If you don't listen, you won't be able to know what to do because very often we hear. They say, yeah, I hear you, but were you listening? So listening and hearing are two different things. So we cannot live for God without becoming sacrifices, and living in continual openness to God's voice. I'm reading from Friday. For us truly to submit our wills to our Father's will, we must recognize the dangers of relying on ourselves and on substitute for God's word and power. Can I rely on that? As submission to God's will is at the heart of a Christ-like life. God may allow crucibles to, take, to teach us dependence on him. And I want to finish at that. Because whatever crucibles we're going through right now, we're going, through, we're going to go through for the next week, we need to rely on God. Well, somebody asked the question, Lord, why? Another person says we ought to ask the Lord, why not? Lord, why you permit these things to happen to me? I am a Christian. I gave my life to you. I'm trying to live the Christian life. Why all of this? Why not all of this? Our lesson teaches that uh, God has a way of teaching us how to follow him. If we only humble ourselves and follow. There comes a time when you've got to learn to know that this is the voice of God telling me to do this. What the Spirit of God tells you what clothes to put on to come to church this morning. He tells you how to lace up your shoes. He will tell you how to do, but we are not listening. So, Pastor, how do you know when it's the voice of God? Ah, how do I know that it is the Spirit of God that is speaking to my mind? A little maxim says, the devil urges, but the Spirit of God entreats. We've got to develop that relationship with the Lord so you know when he's telling you yes or no. Um, your, last week, we, um, I think it was Elijah, right before Adam and Eve, when they sin against God, Adam, he hid himself. And God asked him the, quest, the question, where are you? Mm. God asked Elijah the question, what are you doing here? And when we, when we have a relationship with him, because God was doing with both Adam and Elijah, somehow tap them on the so source, my son, what is happening? Adam said, because of this, then I hide, you know, hid myself. Now, Elijah, because of fear, distrust. When we are in God's will, Pastor, the question you ask, when we are in God's will, it will be distinct. We will know when it's the voice of God and when it's not the voice of God. Yes, sir. And we fool ourselves at times and tell ourselves that we didn't distinct the difference between the voice of God. we fully well aware of it. Once you are in the will of God and you start to move somewhere to the left or to the right, the Bible says that you will hear the still small voice 
the Holy Spirit say, this is the way, walk in it. He will tell you, God not up put himself at a place where he's not responsible to make sure he educates you when you're going out of line or out of the, the right path. When you tend to go to the left or to the right, he will say to you, he tap you on the shoulder and say, Elder Edwards, you're going wrong. What is happening? Elijah, what are you doing here? So God will talk to us, Pastor, when we listen. And there's a difference, as Ella Kum says. Oh, bless the Lord. Listening. We will have to... Yes, Elder. Yes, and um, the scripture tells us also, it was Jesus himself who said, My sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow after me. So how many times we are at places, even churches in church here, and we hear or, or the, the voice of someone coming and we say, oh, so-and-so is coming. So the voice of Jesus speaks to us all the time. So we know his voice. You, I know my parents' voice. I can hear, I can hear it even now. So if we're a child of God, then we're supposed to know the voice of God. We're supposed to be able to identify when it is God who is calling on us. What a precious gift we have. Those who have given themselves to the Lord. God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to guide us. And if you would only listen and follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you will never go wrong. Lord, help us to be faithful. Next Sabbath, we will study about Christ in the crucible. Our last lesson in this quarter. Remember, when the crucibles come, the Lord is just trying to teach you something. Don't give up. Be faithful. When Jesus comes, you will hear from him the well done. Loving Father, thank you so much for what we have learned from the Bible as we studied this week. We ask you now, Lord, that you will cement these precious gems in our minds. Help us to be faithful. When it is yours to come, may we hear from you the well done. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. know that Noah was present at the birth of Abraham? Okay, maybe he wasn't in the room, but he was alive and probably telling stories about his floating zoo. From the creation of the world to the last day events of Revelation, BibleHistory.com is a free resource where you can explore major Bible events and characters, enhance your knowledge of the Bible, and draw closer to God's Word. Go deeper. Visit the amazing Bible timeline at BibleHistory.com. off relationships you know the ones where you give and they take then you sort of realize your worth so you up your price but then you discount yourself and then to them you return yeah one of those the epitome of toxicity the longer we stay together the more i die inside 
I know he's not good for me because when we're off, my spirit is revitalized, but my soul, my soul is tied. My soul yearns for the comfort of his destruction. I love him. I hate him. He hates me. He hates me. Do you not know that your body is a temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? Yes, I know. And yet still I let him in. I become the bridge between his death and his life. I'm a contradiction. Neither of them will let me go. And I gotta admit, part of me loves the attention. To the one who loves me unconditionally, I'm sorry. The body you bought with the price has been rented without your permission. The home you cleaned with literal blood, sweat, and tears has been disrupted, disrespected, as if no one lives here. And I can't even call it robbery because I let him in. He comes and goes as he pleases in the stains, the stains that he leaves, I can't seem to remove them. To the one who loves me unconditionally, it is you I choose. I just have lived with him for so long, I'm not sure how to cut him loose. I know that I've hurt you, but would you please, please help me? To the one set out to destroy me, one day I'm gonna get the courage to leave you. For good, I'll break out of your hold. The one who loves me will hold my hand, lead me forward, and you'll be a thing of the past. No longer are you able to pose as good for me, you imposter. Conviction has opened my eyes and it's time I served you your eviction. To the one set out to destroy me, this is my goodbye letter. I know you haven't left yet, but I already feel better. These words filled with each beat behind my bust. There are two men after my heart. One's name is love, the other, lust.
CWC. My name is Naya. Thank you for joining us in the worship today. We want to take the time to welcome our first time guests and our returning CWC family members. If it's your first time worshiping with us, let us know in the chat below. Even though you're worshiping online, you will still be able to experience the love and support of our virtual CWC family. The Bible says, for where two or three are gathered together in his name, there I am in the midst of them. Now, let's join the service that's already in progress. Hebrews 10 25 says forsake not the assembling of the saints but the Bible also says O come let us serve him with gladness O come before his presence with a song O come proclaim with me the greatness of our Lord O come let us exalt his name together for he alone is love he alone is worthy he alone is God O come children of God let us worship his holy name. Amen. before you, O Lord, knowing that you are our God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. We bow in your splendid glory. We ask, O God, that your presence would be in this place and you would bless us, that our praises, our thanksgiving will be given honor and glory to you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sabbath, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you to the house of God today. I know that you are feeling warm on the inside, but as it spills out on the outside, the AC will take care of it. But I want you to keep some to reach out to someone next to you. So I know you're all wearing your masks and we are not hugging, but we are going to turn to someone and say, I love you. Now, I am wearing my I love you pin. So I want you to turn to somebody and say, I love you. And say it with such passion that they will believe it. I give you a few seconds to do it. Shh. 
share the love. You see, we are brothers and sisters in this place. And when we come to church, when we come together like this, um, we don't want to neglect the, the, the assembling together. And so we don't want to not share the love with each other. So like you just did. You said, I love you to your sister or to your brother. I want you to maintain that the entire service. And as the, the, the worship is going on, get connected with the people beside you. Many of us come to church and we sit beside people and we, we, we walk away. Today, walk away with at least one name of one person who you will call during the week. So as you feel welcome, please make the people beside you feel just as welcome. And those who are worshiping online, you may have your family members with you. Turn to them and tell them you love them as well. And remember, as the service is going on, that we will reach out in spirit to you so that you too can feel connected as the in-person um, worshipers. So on behalf of our pastor, Jason Ridley, and the rest of the CWC family, we welcome you warmly to worship today. We're going to go right into announcements. And the first announcement is not a very happy one. That Sister Ikiki's father passed away. He was 102 years old. Now that is living. So and until his death, up to his death, on the day when he died, he was singing. So his mind was still intact. So the service, the memorial service, because he died in Nigeria, I wish I could go. He died in Nigeria. We're going to have a Zoom service. Um, it's a memorial service on October 8th at 7 p.m. And President Jules will be the speaker. He'll do the homily. So I know we'll want to tune in. The idea is, and I'm going to say it a little slowly today, but you can always see me and get it from me. The Zoom ID is 816-7881. Eight eight zero nine. Again, quickly, 816-7881-8809, and the passcode is 123. How easy can that get? All right? So please remember Sister Kiki in your prayers, the family. The, um, Sister Kiki's mother is still alive, so please pray for her, for her strength. Gems will be meeting next Sabbath at 3 p.m. Sister Doyle would like to have the parents and the children come to the meeting at 3 p.m. I would like to meet with all the assistant clerks and those people who want to be a part of the clerical department, we open our arms to you. Please come. When you volunteer to work, you'll do the work. We don't want to force anyone. So if you want to be a part of the clerical department, please see me. Um, immediately following service next Sabbath. Just for a few minutes. It won't be long. On this um, Sabbath, right after church, um, Elder Kevin Chana would like to meet with all the men. So please, don't run away. Don't go downstairs immediately. Please stay in the sanctuary so you can speak with Elder Chana. He really, really needs to speak with you. He says it's imperative. And when he uses that word, I know it's urgent. All right, so now Sugar Buns will be meeting today and um, they'll be in multipurpose all one and they'll be talking about the five love languages and Pastor Kenley, G. Kenley Price will be the presenter. It's going to be spicy. So make sure you are there, all Sugar Buns and would-be Sugar Buns. So if you're married, thinking about getting married, divorced, I'm probably going to get married again. Widowed, you will get married again. Just make sure you go. Okay? Women's ministries um, will, be, um, will be having, will be hosting their prayer breakfast on September 25th at 8 a.m. Uh, breakfast will be served at 7.30. So don't worry about that. Get up, get dressed. Um, on the 25th of September for 8 o'clock service, um, 
Come before so you can have breakfast at 7.30. Um, Elder Providence is the person responsible, so please speak with her if you need more clarification. The NEC Women's Ministries Department, in recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, will be hosting an awareness webinar on Sunday, October 9th at 7 p.m. Access information will follow soon. Please write these dates and times down. There will also be an All Queens Breast Cancer Walk on October 16th, and this location will be decided on later. There will be a revival on October 30th through November 3rd at 5 a.m. on Zoom. Information will follow. Uh, the women's retreat. Do we have the flyer? Um, a video? Um, you could play that now before I do the last announcement. This year's theme is Renew. We're working on renewing ourselves from the inside out. We're renewing ourselves physically, mentally, financially, but most importantly, spiritually. We've got some great things planned that will assist in your renewal. From prayer walks on the beach, morning exercises, invigorating massages, a Friday night bonfire, a Saturday night empowerment gala, and much more. Our aim is for you to feel renewed. So come relax with us at the Seacrest Beach Hotel in Falmouth, Massachusetts. You still have time for the early bird registration cost of $299. After September 1st, the cost of registration will be $325. So hurry up. Our lineup includes some dynamic speakers that will focus on our theme of renewal. Our general session speaker, Pastor Lola Moore, will feed us with a powerful word each night of the retreat. God for our younger generations who are bringing to our attention that there are things that we have been tolerating that we ought not to things that we have been... Pastor Kim Bolgen will speak to our young adult group. You've never been too wrong to call upon him as your rock, to call upon God as your strong tower, come on, to call upon God as a shelter in the time of storm. speakers will bless us on our path to renew. It's the Women's Ministry Renew Conference, so we haven't forgotten our young ladies, our gems. They will likewise be renewed by great seminars, some fun activities, such as a pajama party and an ice cream social. You don't want to miss out on your moment to relax and renew at the Northeastern Conference's Renew Women's Retreat. Your women's ministry leaders are looking forward to seeing you all there, and you'll be glad you came. Spaces are limited, so sign up quickly. I must also mention that um, Sister Lavonna Casimi will be the speaker at the prayer breakfast. You will want to hear her. Okay, so finally, finally, we are celebrating an anniversary that's not like any other. So we're going to ask Pastor Goff and Sister Goff to come up. Pastor is going to pray for them. They are celebrating 62 years of love. Now, these are real examples of sugar buns. So, Pastor is going to pray for them so that they will celebrate many, many more. Golf, where are you? Somebody help Sister Golf. Amen. Amen. 62 years, that's a long time, amen? My mom wasn't even born yet. So we're we going to have to do a, we're going to have to just take a moment. We have to do a quick interview. Is that all right? I don't know about you, but I, I need some advice. Anybody else need some marriage advice? If the Lord delays his coming long enough, who wants to make it to 62 years married? Amen? Amen. So we're going to, y'all going to have to talk to us for a second. Can I get a microphone?
Let me grab, hand me this mic. Can you bring me the mic? Amen. 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 So, Pastor Golf, Sister Golf, can you tell us what is the secret? We want to hear from both of you <laughs> on how to make it to 62 years in marriage. What's the secret? Now, don't tell us all the secrets, but what's, what's the secret we can know? Amen? i tell you, the secret is love. Begin with love. And it grows from there. It grows from love. And uh, because of love, sometimes you hear and I don't hear. True so. <laughs> Amen. Sister Golf, let us know the secret. Undying love and patience. Amen. Un, she said, undying love and patience. Amen. Amen. Anything else can you share? You can share with us? That's the key. That's the key. Amen. Well, you've heard it best from two experienced sugar buns. Amen. Amen. 62 years of marriage. And they both, if you notice, they both talked about the importance of love. Brothers and sisters, that's what keeps through the hard times in, in life and marriage is the love that keeps everything together. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we thank God for blessing the both of you with 62 years of marriage. Brothers and sisters, we encourage everyone to, to stay on by fellowship with us downstairs. Um, we have some cake and things just to continue the celebration of their 62 years of marriage. Let's put our hands together again. The pastor and Sister Goff. And before you go, we do want to just pause and pray. I just pray a prayer. Uh, so please, everyone, if you could just stretch your hands forward to Pastor and, and, and Sister Goff. Father, the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, God, for this black love, beautiful love. Love, God, for 62 years. We thank you, God, for blessing them with good health. After all these years to still be in their right mind, to still have the activity of their limbs. We're thankful, God, that you have been the center of their marriage. And you are what has held it together for these 62 years. We thank you for the children and grandchildren that uh, have been produced, maybe even great grands that have been produced from this marriage. And we're praying, God, that uh, as you, uh, if you delay your coming any longer, God, that you will continue, God, to give life to both Pastor Goff and Sister Goff. And we're praying, God, that as they continue to live, that their marriage, even after 62 years, God, will only continue to get sweeter and sweeter. The love that they have spoken about on this day, God, we pray that it will only continue to grow. And God, we still hold to uh, just the word of God that said, God, what you have joined together, let no one put asunder. And we're praying, God, that even after 62 years, God, we know the enemy is still angry. But God, we just pray covering over this marriage and that nothing will ever put it asunder. We thank you. We Thank you for just blessing them, and we pray for continued blessings over their life now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's give it up for Pastor and Sister Golf again. Amen. Thank you. Okay, we have the first reading for an incoming transfer from Mildred Anderson. Mildred Anderson from the Spanish Town SDA Church in St. Catherine, Jamaica. This is the first reading. One addition to the ushers department, Kesma Jones. Again, this is the first reading as well. For the addition to the ushers department, Kesma Jones. Okay, it's now time for, the, for baby dedication. We will be dedicating Jalen Montague to the Lord today. The family and friends of Jalen, please come. Amen. And we're going to invite the elders to come at this time as well. As the family comes. Thank you. Thank you. 
for baby Jalen. So family, if you could come right here in the center. I want you to stand right here. Yes, right here. Amen. Yes, come family and friends. Amen. What a beautiful family, amen? With mom... Uh, Germain, Germani, and uh, Father Joshua. And this is baby Jalen. Amen. Amen. So we counted a privilege today uh, to be able to dedicate your baby uh, back to God. Do want to just share uh, just a passage of scripture uh, from the book of Psalms, chapter 139, that simply says, beginning at verse 13, for you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvel, marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well. What a beautiful passage of scripture uh, that reminds us of the sacredness of life and, and the beauty uh, of the process of conception. Uh, and it reminds us that all of our children all of our babies are fearfully uh, and wonderfully made. And God even covers them, uh, even as they're in their mother's womb. And um, what I want to encourage you today is that God has blessed you with this baby that is fearfully and wonderfully made. And with it comes great responsibility. And we're so privileged that uh, you have chosen to have your baby blessed and given back to the Lord here today. But I just want to encourage you to, on those rough days, on those tired days, on those sad days, on those frustrated days, to always remember that your baby is a big gift from God who is fearfully and wonderfully made who God has covered even from his conception. And part of what it means to truly dedicate is understanding the blessing that God has given you is that is what takes place even outside of what we do here. And so as we pray over Joshua today, uh, over Jalen today, it's just symbolic. But the real dedication, the real blessing, the real acknowledgement of this blessing that is fearfully and wonderfully made is what you do on every day from here on out. And every day, I encourage you as parents that as I have prayed and dedicated your child today, that you dedicate your child back to God every day. You know, we, we live in a cruel world, and the enemy, if he could have his way, would snatch our children away. But we're so thankful that the word lets us know that the, the guardian angels of our children, they always have access to the Father. That's beautiful, amen? It goes back to, again because of the precious gift that Jalen is. And so, parents, today, as you take this step, remember each day to spend time with Jalen, telling him the stories of the Bible, praying over him, 
claiming the promises of God, all that God has promised for our children, I encourage you to claim those promises over Jalen and all of any other children you have as well. Because we thank God for how he has blessed you with this gift that is fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? Amen. And at this time, we're going to pray over Jalen. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for Jalen. I thank you for his life. I thank you, God, for his mother and his father. I thank you, God, that you have joined them together to bring forth this precious bundle of joy. And I pray right now, God, that you would cover him. As I am holding him in my arms, God, let it just symbolically represent that throughout the stages of Jalen's life, whether baby or adult, he is always in your arms. I pray, God, that you will put a hedge of protection around him, even now in his youth. God, I pray that no childhood sickness or disease uh, would befall him, God, that would snatch his life away or leave him severely injured or maimed in any way, God. I pray, God, uh, against any kind of accidents that would befall him, God, that could injure his body. God, I pray uh, even right now that you would uh, protect little Jalen's mind. I pray, God, even right now that you would put, uh, 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 put it in his heart and mind a desire for you as his parents share with him the stories of the word and pray over him God I pray that it even now that it would make an impact on his impressionable mind father I pray God that you would give Jalen in his young age God a heart for you I pray God that you would help Jalen as he grows God to to just be a success in every area of his life I pray God that as he grows and enters school I pray God that Jalen will be the head and not the tail God that he will be an example for others God that he will be uh, uh, be God um, one of the leaders and not followers God I pray God that that uh, in this dangerous world that we live in God I pray that as your hedge of protection is around uh, Jalen God I pray that that protection spreads to all the children who are around him, God, whether he's in school, whether he's at the playground, whether he's uh, at his friend's house, God, I pray that because your covering is over Jalen's life, God, that it would extend to every child in his presence. God, I pray, God, that you would give in him, even at a young age, a voice, God, that will, will not be used to tear people down and to speak negativity of others, but it'll be a voice, God, that is used to uplift and to build up God, all who he comes into contact. God, I pray that as he continues to grow and enters, God, into his adolescence, God, and teen years, God, and we know that the traps and uh, that the enemy has prepared, but we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that even now, God, that, that, uh, that God, even as uh, Jalen uh, enters into those years, God, I pray, God, that his relationship with his parents will not become rocky as he gets older. But their relationship will go stronger. Their bond will grow stronger. I pray, God, that uh, you would begin to put a calling on his life and begin to reveal it to him, God, sooner then later so that he will know even as he grows and entered into teenage years God that the steps his steps are ordered by you I pray God that you would uh, God whatever career path that you have for Jalen God I pray that he will be a leader that he will be the head and and not the tail that p others will look to him God as an example I pray God that he will always walk with you I pray, God, that whatever trials uh, or 
issues or situations that he deals with in life. God, I pray, God, that nothing will ever come that will break him down, but only the trials that he faces in life, God, will be trials that strengthen him in God, that encourage him and build his faith in you. I pray, God, that as he continues to live and enter into his uh, collegiate years and into young adult years, God, I pray, God, for his future. I pray, God, even, God, for his future, a success, God, not just in work and in employment. We pray, God, that you would bless, uh, bless in those areas. But, God, I even pray for covering over his personal life. I pray, God, that, that, uh, that as his parents stand here together today, that, God, when the appointed time shall come, God, that whoever it has that you have for Jalen in his future, God, that at the appointed time that their paths would cross. I'm praying, God, that you would even protect his future, even now, God, that as I'm praying for him, that whoever that, that young baby girl is somewhere, that this same prayer extends to her. And I'm praying, God, that, that what you one day, God, in the future join together, let no man put asunder. And I pray for their future posterity, God, if it's your will and their desire to bring forth uh, seeds and to replenish the earth, God, that they will be blessed and anointed and highly favored. I pray, God, even now for a special prayer over Jalen's parents. Because, God, we don't want Jalen at such a young age, God. To ever grow up as an orphaned, parentless child. But bless his parents. Keep them in good health. Give them long life. His siblings, God, I pray that their bond will always be strong and never be broken. And I'm praying most important of all, God, that at whatever stage or season you return, whether Jalen is in his youth, whether he's a young adult, whether he's a senior, or whether he's lived a long life, God, and is now resting in the grave. But whenever you shall return, God, I'm praying that Jalen will be in that number. I'm praying that his family will be in that number. And I'm praying, God, for a great reunion in the sky when you shall return. And we claim these promises. We claim these victories, God, not because of our, that because we're great or worthy, but because you're great and you're worthy. And we thank you for hearing and answering the prayers of your people. And we claim blessings now over baby Jalen. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let every lover of the risen Christ say amen. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Good 
and the righteous stands a champion robed in white his height exceeds the heavens his weight outweighs the world his reach reaches everywhere worship today is hymn number 373, Seeking the Lost, hymn number 373, Seeking the Lost.
How many of you know we serve a good God? Jesus said, above all, uh, my house shall be called a house of what? A house of what? Prayer. For all people. Amen. And so we want to just take some time to spend in prayer today. Uh, bear with me. There are so many names of individuals asking for prayer. I'm going to call out some of the names. We want to remember Sister Marjorie Vassal, Sandra Freeman's aunt, uh, who's not doing well. She's in ICU uh, even as we speak. Uh, we want to remember uh, Sister Rose Wright, her family, uh, who has lost another loved one cousin has passed in Jamaica. They've recently had death and now experienced death again. We want to remember Keisha Brooks. That's uh, Sister Tamisha Miller's friend who has a lump uh, that's been found on her back. We want to remember uh, Sister Dolores Campbell. Uh, we know that Sister Yvette's mom who had a mild stroke is in the hospital uh, at this time. We want to remember, and I want to hope I pronounce this correct, uh, Evan Miller. Did I say that correctly? Evine, Evine Miller. Um, that's Elder Shaw's cousin um, who's not doing well, and I believe they don't know how much longer uh, she's going to be be in the land of the living. We want to remember her in our prayers. We want to remember our very own sister uh, Dun Coombs, Brother Daryl's grandmother, uh, who's not doing well today. Uh, I've been given a note. I'm going to try to make sure I can read this. Just received, but um, a barber's asking for friend, prayer for a friend don't have the name, but the friend, um, unfortunately, uh, just received a divorce notice. She has two small children, five and seven. Uh, we want to remember her in our prayers. Um, she has another friend going through hard times. Uh, who's not able to work and is struggling to pay her rent. We want to remember or the other friend as well. Uh, and we want to remember, I see that it's come in online, uh, Lorraine Chavez, uh, who's dealing with memory loss, hearing loss, health problems. Uh, the request to sh that she be restored with flawless health. How I many you know that there's nothing too hard Amen. for God? And I even just applaud the faith of Phil Chavez, who is asking for flawless health. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, I, I know that there are a lot of requests. These are those who just come to me in the moment. I heard, but I know there are others who have requests here today. But I'm thankful to know that even those who I may not know or have called out publicly I'm thankful because God already knows amen and God is already in the healing business and uh, even with the vastness of the struggles and issues that we're dealing with I, I still believe that God is on the throne and he's still in control amen and so we're gonna seek our God today the healer that he is and I'm asking even as Phil online is asking for flawless health but I'm asking that God will do to move flawlessly in every area of our life. Whatever the need is today, we want God to move flawlessly. Amen? And so let's call on him now at this time. And I'm going to invite those who want to just press closer. I invite you to come at this time as our praise team sings.
God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on our way. Father, we come before you today. in need of you. God, our needs are vast. Uh, our list is long. But we're thankful, God, that on this day, we have come here to the house of God that you declared is the house of prayer. And we're bringing our petitions before you, God, not discouraged because of the vastness, not discouraged because of how many names and things and problems and challenges are on the list, but with our heads held up high in faith, knowing, God, that there is nothing too hard for you. That there's nothing, God, that you can't handle. There is no mountain that you can't move. There's no valley that you can't make straight. There's no sickness that you cannot heal. There's no chain that you cannot break. There's no stronghold that you cannot move. And we say thank you on this day, God. So God, as we come before you today, God, I lift up all of the names that we've just called out. And I add even God that has just come in, Sister Hanfield, who's not doing well. God, I add her name to the list and all of the names, God, that I didn't have uh, the knowledge to call out. But every name, God, that, that has been poured out to you this week, every name, every individual, God, who has been laid on the altar right now, God, whether that individual is here in person or tuning in online, God, we lay them all at the altar right now in Jesus' name. And we're touching and agreeing, God, uh, uh, asking you to move and to do miracles in this place. And we're, God, coming with faith, God, asking that you move flawlessly, God. And we're asking for healings, God. Uh, we're praying that you would restore uh, the sick to full and flawless health, God. Even those, God, who are on their deathbed, God, we have not given up hope yet because we, God, know your word where Hezekiah prayed. Uh, on his deathbed and you added God 15 years to his life. So God, even those who are on the deathbed, we're asking God if it's your will right now in Jesus' name, God, that you would turn their situation now, that you would speak life into their bones, that you would speak life to their heart and that you, God, would, would restore their health in fullness. God, there are those who come today who are like my dear sister, God, who God may have been uh, served uh, unknowingly divorced papers, God, and they feel like their life is crumbling and falling apart. But, but God, we're praying and hoping first and foremost that, that marriages would be restored. Uh, but God, even uh, if it does not come back together, we're praying, God, that you would help those who are hurting to know that they are not alone, God, because you are with them. Uh, that their children are still covered, uh, that their life is still covered, uh, and that they will be okay in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray for those, God, who are like the friend we called out today, God, who don't know how they're going to make ends meet, struggling financially, unable to work. But God, we're praying, God, that you will continue to provide, that you would continue God to uh, just open up doors uh, uh, that no man can shut God that we're praying God that you would block the enemy God that who wants to keep them down and I'm praying God that you would restore right now uh, to those who are struggling God restore everything that the enemy has taken from them 
We're praying, God, that you do it flawlessly. We're praying and thanking you, God, because there are those who've had strokes and other uh, illnesses and diseases that have come, and uh, God, who, who God, uh, uh, if the enemy had had it his way, it would have been a lot worse, but we thank you for your grace and mercy that covers your children. And God, we thank you even for those reports today as we're those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. God, we can say thank you even in the midst of the hurt and pain. We can say thank you. And God, we can say thank you today because of the sacrifice that you paid for us on Calvary's cross. You died, God, so that our death would not be a finality. And so we thank you even now, God, uh, that even though we've lost some loved ones, but we are thankful to know, God, that soon and very soon, uh, Jesus is coming back again, uh, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and we'll be reunited. So we say thank you, God. And we thank you for those, God, who have come with unspoken requests. Issues and things, God, some may be ashamed of. Some may be so discouraged that they don't want anyone else to know what they're struggling and dealing with. But I'm so thankful to know, God, uh, that you even answer our unspoken prayers. I'm thankful, God, that there is stuff that even that we may, may never uh, utter audibly, God, but yet you know in our hearts and minds what we're dealing with. And we're praying for healing and restoration and deliverance right now in Jesus' name. And we claim victory right now. And Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor that's due your name. Because there's no one like you. We're thankful, God, that when we're all alone and feel like we can't make it, that, that we are never alone. For you are with us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let every lover of the risen Christ say amen. Amen. And amen.
Come on, say amen again. verses 34 to 38 and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto me and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. Verse 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in his name. Amen. It is now that time to receive the morning tithes and offering. May the deacons come forth. Confession. I have something to confess. This is, Lord, in your words, you call the tithes and offering holy and say that it is yours and that I should bring my offering to you today as part of my act of worship. And I believe that you will pour out your blessing on my life that there will be no room enough to receive it. I stand on your word, dear Lord, because you are faithful and you have told us in your word in Leviticus 27, 30, that this gift is holy. Help me, Lord, to be worthy of all that you have been doing for me and help me to trust you more and give myself as that living sacrifice. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly, grudgingly, or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. At this time, let's take a look at the screen. There are several ways that you can return your tithes and offering. The first way is through online giving, cwcsda.org, giving. You may go to the section that says um, tithes, and you will indicate your offering and your tithe. Be generous in giving, especially in your local church. 
The next one is through the Zell. CWCSDA Treasury at gmail.com. You may give and indicate how your giving should be allocated. The next way of giving is through the post office. You will send your check, make sure it's um, signed to the Community Worship Center of Seven Day Adventist, and you will put it at P.O. Box 340870, Jamaica, New York, 11434. The other way, and also please indicate it how that should be allocated. The next way, if at all you have not done the above, you can call any of our deacons, elders, pastors, or the treasury staff at 718-276-6131. They will be more than kind to come and receive your tithes and offering. Remember, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. God loves a cheerful giver. Bring ye all the tithes and offering into the storehouse, and prove me now herewith, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Father God, we thank you for your blessing upon our lives. May we be faithful in all aspects of our giving, not only in our treasury, but in our time, dear Lord. And help us, dear Lord, to do what is best so that this work will go forward with our offerings. I do pray in your precious name with thanksgiving. Amen.
the crowds have lined the narrow streets to see this man from Galilee just a carpenter some say leading fools astray yet many kneel to give him praise and in his eyes they glimpse the power that sees the hearts of all men and he knows his father's mind and he speaks his father's words for he comes in the name of the Lord there is strength in the name of the Lord there is power in the name of the Lord there is hope in the name of the Plans have fallen through, and when my strength is nearly gone, when there's nothing left to do, when there's nothing left to do but to call upon the power of your name. that he cannot do when we call upon the name of the Lord there is strength in his name and there's nothing he can do there is strength in the name of the Lord
The name of the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. It's his breath that is in our lungs, and that is why we are here today to worship. We're here to pour out our praise unto him. Amen. So I invite you to worship with us as we sing this song to him.
Think about something that God has brought you through and just sing great. Holy name, you deserve. 
Somebody say hallelujah. How many of you are blessed by the music? Come on, say amen again. So we thank you, praise team, Brother Tavon, for blessing us uh, in music on this beautiful Sabbath day. Amen. It's so good to be in God's house. How many of you got to be in God's house on this day? Amen. Amen. There's so many, uh, just going to move through very quickly, but there's several highlights that I want to mention to you at this time as we get ready to get into the word. I do first want to, and you can go ahead and put the flyer on the screen now for Young Adult Day. We want to remind everyone that on next Sabbath is our Young Adult day. Somebody say amen. 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 And we're so happy to have with us uh, Pastor Paul Graham. How many of you know Pastor Paul Graham? Uh, he'll be our speaker. I see several hands are raised. He'll be our speaker uh, on next Sabbath. And so we're looking forward to Pastor Graham being here with us as well as uh, Xavier Wade uh, as the special musical guest. So we want to encourage you to in invite all of your, your family, your friends, your children, your grandchildren, young adults, your friends. Uh, please invite all of your young adults uh, to come and worship with us on next Sabbath. Amen? Amen. Um, going along with the Young Adult Day, we are excited to share uh, with you as well um, that we're having a, a week of prayer uh, this week. It'll be virtual, um, sponsored by our Young Adult Ministries. Um, that'll begin on tomorrow evening. And, uh, and so if we can have that flyer, it's already up there. And so you have Pastor Noah Washington, Pastor Tina Carriger, and uh, Pastor Nawadi in Dubisi, who will be uh, speaking with us virtually online. Um, each night. Uh, what time, Olivia? At 7.30. Amen? Amen. So they're going to be, it's going to be Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. What nights did I say? Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, you'll be able to tune in. Uh, same place when you're not here, you tune in on our YouTube uh, channel. You'll be able to uh, stream uh, the virtual services uh, leading up. The theme is created on purpose. Created on what? Purpose. So please share that as well with all of uh, your young adults the week of prayer beginning on tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. And I do want to just thank our, our newly formed young adult uh, leaders and group uh, who put in a lot of work in planning and preparing for this young adult day. Amen? Which will begin. You can do better than that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Along with that, we're encouraging you as well. Are we still collecting donations? Uh, because one of the things that they're going to do on next Sabbath is have a community outreach uh, after service. And so please, if you have not turned in your physical donations, 
uh, please turn them in as soon as possible. Or you can give a generous financial donation as well uh, today, and then they'll pick up the items. Uh, but the items, uh, if you can put that up on the screen, um, are we collecting Ziploc bags, bar of soap or body wash, hand sanitizer, toothbrushes, sanitary napkins, toothpaste, washcloths, chips, juice, water. We're also going to be giving out COVID uh, tests as well. Um, so please, brothers and sisters, I know all of you at some point uh, go to a store that sells these items every week. Amen. So please, next time you're there this week, pick up a few items to bring and donate to give out to the needy, those who are in need in our local community. Amen? Amen. Uh, I also want to mention to you as well, uh, coming up this week on Tuesday night, um, so you know, September is Suicide Prevention Month, uh, and the actual emphasis week was September the 4th through the 10th. Now, unfortunately, we did miss uh, that, uh, those particular dates, but we still wanted to take time out um, for, um, for um, to just um, spend some time um, with our young people, uh, and particularly our teens, on this Tuesday at 6 p.m. on how to help a friend. How to do what? How to help a friend. One of the reasons why we still want to make sure that we do this uh, is because it was requested. Uh, by some of our, our teens here um, because that is an issue that many of young people are struggling with. Suicidal thoughts, suicidal tendencies. Am I right or wrong? And so we want to do what we can here uh, at our church to, to help. And so the Zoom ID, it's how to help a friend, will be laid out by two uh, mental health professionals, one of them being my wife. Amen? Um, but it'll be led out by two, and it'll begin on Tuesday, September the 20th at 6 p.m. on Zoom. The Zoom, unfortunately, I know you can't see it, but write this down. The Zoom meeting ID is 836. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to read it a couple times. The meeting ID is 836-1029-7863. Again, the meeting ID is 836 one zero two nine seven eight six three. I'll read it one last time. Eight three six one zero two nine seven eight six three. And the passcode is friend. The passcode is what? Friend. The passcode is friend. So if you know of any young people who are struggling, uh, if you've had those thoughts yourself, we want you to to join with us on Tuesday night at six p.m. on how to help a friend. Amen. 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 Uh, brothers and sisters, we as well are gearing up for our doctrinal series that will begin uh, on the first Sabbath in October. As you know, our doctrinal series will cover the Sabbath, the sanctuary, the state of the dead, the spirit of prophecy, and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll tackle one of those subjects on each Sabbath during the month of October. That's October the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. We're hoping and encouraging you to invite uh, your friends and family out. And so with that, we're going to go over again our impact evangelism for the month of October. On October the 1st, we're invite, asking you to invite who? A friend, someone who is a friend, uh, that you consider a friend. We will encourage you to invite them to be with us here on October the 1st. On October the 8th, we're encouraging you to invite who? A relative. Most of us here have relatives in the city. We're encouraging you to invite uh, at least one relative. If you don't have any biological relatives here, if there's someone who you consider a friend, if you, your children call them uncle or auntie, you call them sister or brother, we want to encourage you to invite them on that second Sabbath. Amen? On October the 15th, what are we encouraging you to invite? An associate, someone who may not, uh, you may not necessarily consider a, f a friend or relative, but they're an associate, someone you're cordial with, could be a co-worker, someone you take the same bus route, a train route to work, and you speak. We want to encourage you to invite uh, an associate. On the fourth Sabbath, we're asking you to invite who? A neighbor. If you live in this city, you live near somebody. Amen. Amen. So we encourage you to invite a neighbor to come and worship with you on that fourth Sabbath. And then on the last Sabbath of the month, we're asking you to invite who? A missing member. Brothers and sisters, most of you here who've been here any amount of time 
know someone who was once a part of the church, once a part of the fellowship, who is not here. It could have been COVID that, uh, that uh, has caused the falling away. We don't know whatever it is, but I want to encourage you on the last Sabbath of October to invite a missing member. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, and then as well on October the 1st, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that we're going to have, a, that's going to be a special high day, and we're going to have an official welcome on that Sabbath to all of our new members, to those who were baptized uh, during the, uh, the evangelistic crusades that have taken place all across New York. Amen? Amen. As you saw on last Sabbath, we had some who uh, we weren't even aware of who were baptized at other tents um, around outside of Queens, but they have chosen to make this their home. On the first Sabbath in October, we're going to have a special fellowship meal time and everything. We want to officially welcome them into fellowship here at Community Worship Center. Amen. Amen. And just by chance, is there anyone here today uh, who is here maybe for the first time? Uh, and you were baptized recently in one of the crusades uh, that have taken place uh, here in New York, uh, but you have decided to make this your church home. If you're here, um, we want to acknowledge you so that we can make sure that we get your contact information. And so if you're here now, I do want you to just raise your hand so we can acknowledge you if there is anyone uh, here on this Sabbath. I see a hand in the back. Come on, say amen. Amen. So elders, uh, I'm going to need someone. I, let, let's not even wait. Let's, let's do that at this time. Uh, can you just raise your hand again so we can acknowledge you? Amen. Elder Doris is going to come back to get your information so we can just bring you into the fellowship here. Come on and say amen. 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 And then, brothers and sisters, there is AY today. Give me one second as I pull it up. AY will be at 5 p.m. and it will be virtual. Amen. And the topic will be the millennial. Well, the topic uh, today will be uh, school work life balance. Um, some of the health challenges that many of us face is because uh, our lives aren't balanced. Am I right or wrong? And so they're going to talk about school work life balance, dealing with finance, work, health, family, school, fun. And uh, we'll have uh, uh, multiple presenters at 5 p.m. And the meeting ID for AY is 351-226-1727. i read that again. 351-226-1727. Last time, 351-226-1727. And the passcode is CWCSDA. CWCSDA. Amen? Amen. And then lastly, we'll get into our word. Uh, I do want to just encourage you. We were so blessed uh, on this Sabbath to recognize and honor Pastor Golf and his wife, uh, who are celebrating 62 years of marriage today, celebrating their 62nd wedding anniversary. It's okay to, to celebrate that. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, so we have a, a cake and refreshments downstairs. We encourage you to, to stay on by to celebrate with us on their 62nd wedding anniversary. But speaking of 67, that should be all of our goal in life uh, for those who are married that we too can say uh, if, if we live long enough that our marriage makes it to 40 and 50 and 60 and, and 70 years. Amen. And so one of the things that we're doing here, uh, come December uh, the 11th, what day did I say? December the 11th of 2022, our church, we're having a forever we do, and it'll be a wedding vow renewal. Amen? Sponsored by our Sugar Buns uh, Ministry. And we're encouraging all of our couples here uh, to take part on December the 11th, 2022, that's a Sunday at 6 p.m. at Verdes of Westbury in Long Island. We have, a, have a reserved a, a very beautiful facility, and uh, you're going to feel like you're getting married all over again. Amen? Amen. The registration required is $90 per person. Late registration will be October the 31st, um, and that cost will be $100. Uh, and it's non-refundable. All are welcome. You don't even have to be married to attend. Amen? 
And so those married couples who have families, if you want to bring your children, your grandchildren, they're more than welcome to attend as well. But I think it's, it's, it's very important, and particularly brothers and sisters, coming out of COVID. Um, you know, COVID killed a lot of people physically, unfortunately. But unfortunately, it also killed a lot of marriages. Are you hearing me? You know, a lot of people, you know, when the shutdown happened, you know, it forced people to spend time with each other. Let's be honest. And it's unfortunate that sometimes uh, marriages can become stale. Um, and uh, when you don't keep, keep things fresh and you can get into a habit where we're just living together. No longer in love, no longer in joy's company, but we get so used to our routine and we're not actually spending a lot of time together that we get by. Brothers and sisters, unfortunately, can I be real today? That's why some people come to church on Sabbath and won't stay here all day. Let's just be real. That's why it's just, it, it could be in any church. That's, that's why. Monday through Friday, they got their own work schedules, and so they don't see each other. But on Sabbath, when we're not working, when we're not, when we're, when, when we, neither of us is working, and, 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 and if you did not have church and could come here all day, some people might be forced to actually spend time together. But the way people have gotten around that is to sit in church all day and not really address and deal with the issues in their marriage. Are you hearing me? Brothers and sisters, this is not about just saying, renewing vows, saying I do again. But we're hoping for marriages to, to be restored, to be strengthened, to be renewed. Amen? I do believe that when, when God said what he has joined together, that no man put asunder. That, that we should strive for that to be our goal. Amen? And, you know, one of the things that I've heard from so many older couples who lasted, it's not that they didn't get to points in their marriage where things didn't get hard or tough. It was just the reason they survived is because they were unwilling to quit. Are you hearing me? And so this is, is an opportunity for someone for some couples to say, you know what? It's been hard. It's been rough. But God has been good to us. And we're going to refuse to quit. Amen? So join us on December 11, 2022. For forever we do. Please see Natalie or Kevin Williams uh, for those who would like to, to, to uh, register and be a part on that day. Amen? Amen. Come on, stand with me now as we go to God's word. Turn with me to the book of Daniel. What book did I say? The book of Daniel chapter 4. The book of Daniel chapter 4. And I'm reading you here in verses 19 through 24. That's the book of Daniel chapter 4. Verse 19 through 24. And the word of God says, Then Daniel, whose name is Belt to Shazar, was appalled for a while as his thoughts alarmed him. The king responded and said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its interpretation alarm you. Belteshazzar answered and said, my lord, if only the dream applied to those who hate you and its interpretation to your adversaries. The tree that you saw, which became large and grew strong, whose height reached to the sky and was visible to all the earth, and whose foliage was beautiful and its fruit abundant, and in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and whose branches the birds of the sky lodged. It is you, O king, for you have become great and grown strong, and your majesty has become great and reached to the sky, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And in that, the king saw an angelic watcher, a holy one, descending from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it. Yet leave the stump with his roots in the ground. 
but with a band of iron and bronze around it in the new grass of the field. And let him be drenched with the dew of heaven and let him share with the beast of the field until seven periods of time pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the King. For the next few moments, you may be seated at this time. For the next few moments, let us consider the message entitled, Cut Down, But Not Cut Out. Cut down, but not cut out. Bow your heads with me now. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me now. Use me as thy anointed man serving to speak words of life in this show sanctuary. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Let every lover of the risen Christ say amen. Amen. And amen. Before we even get into the word, brothers and sisters, I do want to mention to you that if there, you see the pool has been up for the last couple weeks, it's because we've been waiting uh, for, uh, in particularly, one young girl who uh, maybe a few months ago, uh, we dedicated her sister. We blessed her sister her baby sister, but as her family was here that Sabbath, she took her stand for Jesus Christ. Uh, but unfortunately, she has not been able to be here these last few weeks, and I spoke to the mom the other day. Um, the young girl's name is Serenity, it's because the baby has been very sick. And so let's remember that family uh, in our prayers. Amen? Amen. But I do want to mention just two things, though. But if there is someone here today, the pool's going to come down today. Uh, but there is, if, if there is someone who uh, is in the valley of decision and you're made to make that decision uh, and you want to get baptized today, uh, let us know and we will do that um, while the pool is still up. Amen? The other option is that on next Sabbath, we do have one uh, individual who uh, has taken their stand for Christ. But they have requested, and I'm going to honor the request, they have been requested to have a beach baptism. So on next Sabbath, we will be doing a baptism uh, after service at the beach. Uh, and if there's any soul here who wants to make a decision for Christ and you desire to be baptized at the beach as well, please let us know on this day so that we can add you into that number. Uh, this will be the only beach baptism for this year. Amen. <laughs> uh, we're going to do it before the weather change. Amen. So if you do want to be baptized there, uh, we'll do our best to honor it, uh, but it will have to be on next Sabbath. Amen? Amen. Cut down, but not cut out. A former classmate and friend of mine had a saying that went like this. Your thing might not be my thing. And my thing might not be your thing. But we've all got a thing. Brothers and sisters, what that simply means is that each and every one of us here has an issue that we struggle with that sometimes seems to get the best of us. Doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. Doesn't matter how long or how many positions you've held. It doesn't matter how important you think you are, it doesn't matter how well off you are, everybody's got a thing. Every day we see powerful, influential people, people who seem like they are living on top of the world. Yet every day we see on social media and and news outlets, their lives crumbling apart right before our very own eyes, all because of their thing, their issue. And it's easy for us to point fig fingers at public figures such as uh, celebrities and politicians and athletes because of their shortcomings, even though many of them have never professed to be Christians or to be believers. So it's easy uh, to point fingers, to point out their flaws, uh, their issues, their things. But if I'm, but if I'm going to be open and honest with you today, I must admit, brothers and sisters, that I'm no different than anyone else because I have a thing. 
And if you're going to be open and honest with yourself, you must admit that you too have a thing. Or your thing might not be my thing. And my thing might not be your thing. But we've all got a thing. And yes, for some of us, by God's grace, we may have uh, grown to a place where we no longer give in to that thing. Uh, or, or, but the truth of the matter is, uh, just staying victorious uh, over that thing every day, uh, if we're honest, is a struggle, uh, is a battle in and of itself. Oh, I'm in somebody's neighborhood today. Because you know what I'm talking about. And hear me, brothers and sisters, we do a good job faking it, and we're able to pull it off because most of us only see each other one time a week. And so we come here on Sabbath wearing our nice suits and uh, beautiful dresses and our fancy shoes uh, and we get our hair done nice uh, and fresh and we put on a smile uh, and we bring our happy Sabbaths uh, but yet underneath all of the outward appearance uh, we are struggling with our thing, uh, praying and hoping uh, no one finds out, uh, not realizing that we are all uh, in the same boat uh, and we all need each other because we've all got a thing. And understand today that the reality that we've all got a thing levels the playing field. In other words, just because somebody else may struggle with their thing more than you or I struggle with our thing does not make us any better than they are. Just because we are in the church and don't do some of the things we used to do doesn't give us the right to act like we are better than anyone else, especially those people who come here looking for help and for hope uh, who are exactly where we used to be before we met Jesus. You see some young man struggling with alcohol or some other addiction. Don't look down on him, but encourage him. Remember, that used to be you. Some young girl, young woman gets pregnant out of wedlock. You're right, it's not God's ideal, but he still loves the baby. And he wants to restore the young mother and father, so don't look down on them. Encourage them. Remember, that used to be you. Because some of y'all got pregnant out of wedlock. Just nobody around is old enough to remember. Y'all hear me? Because you know how some of us can be as soon as we take our stand for Christ. Some of us act as if we've arrived and perfection has set in. Some folk act as soon as they went down into the watery grave of baptism that their things and issues fell off in the water and they were meant instantly made whole and in their minds they are uh, and in their minds they instantly become the standard bearer for all things Christianity and judge everyone else by a standard that they don't even live up to and some of us forget that the church is merely a hospital for the sick and every one of us is a patient in need of the great physician but too many of us over time have forgotten that we are patients and we now think that we are physicians and we're trying to prescribe our own prescriptions and all the while, we're trying to pretend as if we've got it all together. And it's unfortunate today. Because the reason why some of us may still be struggling with that same thing is because we refuse to admit that it still exists. We're too busy trying to convince ourselves and everyone else that it does not exist anymore or that we have control over it. Even here in our text, we see that Nebuchadnezzar had a thing. 
he had an issue that sometimes seemed to get the best of him. As a matter of fact, it sometimes seemed to control him. His issue was his pride. He had accomplished many great things during his reign. He had conquered all of his enemies and many nations. He was arguably the most powerful man in the world at that time. Speaking of pride, hear me now. Benjamin Franklin once wrote, there is perhaps no one of our natural passions so hard to subdue as pride. Beat it down. Stifle it. Mortify it as one pleases, but it's still alive. He says, even if I could conceive that I had completely overcome it, I should probably be proud of my humility. The Bible says that pride, speaking of pride, that it goes before a fall. And Nebuchadnezzar began to take pride and what he had done, he began to think that he was the man, that he was in control, that he was on top and everyone else was at the bottom. Thus God sent him this dream. And one writer says that the lesson of the dream is a familiar one throughout the scriptures. Human pride readily forgets that God is creator and that man is creature, utterly dependent on him for all of life's provision and for life itself. Now in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, uh, uh, there was a green tree in the middle of the earth. Uh, in its height, uh, it said uh, its height reached the sky and it could be seen throughout the whole earth. The beast of the field found shade under it, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches, and all of the living creatures fed themselves from it. Then there came an angelic messenger which shouted, chop down the tree and cut off his branches, but leave the stump with its roots in the ground with a band of iron and bronze around it in the new grass of the field. Then it says, let him be dent, drenched with the dew of heaven. Uh, let him share uh, with the beast. In other words, let him eat grass uh, in the field. Uh, let his mind be changed from that of a man uh, to that of a beast. Uh, and let seven periods of time pass over him. This is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar received and even though he calls for Daniel to interpret the dream for him uh, after his magicians and wise men couldn't interpret it, yet one can make the argument that he already knows that the dream is referring to him. For you see, in an inscription at the Wadi Brissa, and, and a Wadi uh, is an Arabic word uh, that generally refers to a valley where water flows uh, only during the wet or rainy season. Uh, but in an inscription there, uh, Nebuchadnezzar compared his empire to a great tree. And stay with me, brothers and sisters. Gerhard Fandel says that sacred or cosmic trees were a major element of the iconography of ancient Mesopotamia. Many seals from the Neo-Assyrian or Neo-Babylonian time depict such trees. And usually there, look at the picture, brothers and sisters, usually there in the center of the image is a sacred palm tree. And above the tree is a winged sun disc with a feathered tail representing the sun god. From the wings, two streams of water flow along the sides of the sacred tree. And on either side of the tree appears representations of kings or priests in the act of worship. He says the tree represents the divine world order maintained by the king as the representative of the god Asur embodied in the winged sun disk hovering above the tree. It says sometimes the king takes the place of the tree and in such scenes the king is portrayed as a human personification of the tree. Thus if the tree symbolized the divine world order then the king himself represented the realization of that order in man. In other words a true image of God the perfect man. 
What am I trying to say here? In other words, the suggestion that is being made here is that the king, King Nebuchadnezzar himself, is God. That he represents God. Now we know, brothers and sisters, that he is not God. And in the interpretation, Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar that you are the tree, and by the chopping down of the tree, it's a rebuke to Nebuchadnezzar about his pride, showing him that he is not God, neither is he the perfect man. However, at the same time, in the midst of the chopping down of the tree, the angel said, leave the stump and its roots in the ground, leaving a message of hope in the midst of his present circumstances. As a result, brothers and sisters, there are three observations that we want to look at today from this text. The first observation that we find here in this text, brothers and sisters, is the simple fact that we see our very own self-inflicted wounds in our own lives. In our what? You see, Nebuchadnezzar, hear me now, Nebuchadnezzar, if he would have heeded God's word at first, he would have never had to go through this experience. You see, in chapter 1 of Daniel, God tried to show him who was in control by causing Daniel and his friends to be 10 times wiser and better than the rest because they followed him by refusing to eat the king's unclean foods. In chapter 2, God gave him the dream of the great statue made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, and clay to show him that his kingdom was not invincible and would not last forever. But instead of learning his lesson, in chapter 3, he makes his own statue all from gold as to suggest that his kingdom would last forever. Once again, though, in the same chapter, God shows him who's in, who's in charge by delivering the three Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace. And even here in chapter 4, Daniel interprets the dream for him and tells him what he needs to do to make it right. And the text says in verse 29 that he had 12 months. He had a whole year to make things right. He had a whole year to get things right, but he still refused to humble himself and repent. How often are we the same way? We make a lot of things worse for ourselves by not following God's word and his will. It's almost as if we're like a little child uh, whose mother has told them, uh, do not put your hand uh, on top of the stove uh, because the stove is hot, uh, but yet the little child uh, touches the top of the stove anyway uh, and burns his or her hands uh, as if their mother's words were not good enough. And this is how we treat God sometimes as if his words are not good enough. I have a former member who has been miserable in an unhappy marriage for years now. I tried to warn her not to marry the guy. I refused to marry them myself because I knew he wasn't right for her. Not long after the wedding, she realized she messed up and she confided in me that she knew she was not supposed to marry him because God had told her that he was not the one for her. But she married him anyway because she wouldn't listen. And now she's been living in self-inflicted misery for years. 
even here right now, somebody is being misused and abused in a relationship that God warned you not to get in, but you wouldn't listen. Somebody here is struggling to shake loose of an addiction because you took that first sip or you hit that first puff when he warned you not to, but you wouldn't listen. Somebody here has missed out on some great opportunities where God opened up doors for you and told you which way to go, but you would not listen. Brothers and sisters, when God is trying to tell us something today, we have to listen. Or oh, it might not be what you like uh, or what you want to hear, uh, but I've lived life long enough to know that it's what's best for you and it's what's best for me. Nebuchadnezzar almost destroyed himself uh, because he wouldn't listen. The children of Israel uh, had to wander around the wilderness uh, for 40 years uh, until a whole generation died off because they would not listen. Uh, Lot's wife was turned uh, into a pillar of salt uh, because she would not listen. Jonah had to end up in the belly uh, of a giant fish because he wouldn't listen. Uh, we have to listen today. We, brothers and sisters, I'm talking about us. Uh, in the words of the hip-hop legends outcast, uh, I'm talking about me and you, uh, your mama and your cousin too, uh, all of us. Uh, we make a lot of issues and struggles uh, we go through in life worse than they have to be. Let me just throw this in here. Because I got to say it. Because I'm so tired of so many believers blaming God for everything and giving the devil way too much credit. Understand, brothers and sisters, there's some stuff we bring on ourselves. You're going through so much hell in life, but God didn't tell you to hook up with that person. And the devil didn't make you do it. You chose to get involved and you chose to stay in it. Can we be real? You don't return a faithful tithe and offering. Struggling to pay your bills and always behind in your rent or mortgage. You always want to complain that you don't have any money, but you got a steady job. Listen, God did not tell you to live above your means. You're mad because year after year, you feel stuck in the same place in life, not advancing, not moving forward, not climbing the ladder of success, and you're mad at the world, mad at God, but God didn't tell you to drop out of school. He didn't tell you to stop furthering your education. He didn't tell you not to take that good job serious or to quit, and the devil didn't make you do it. You chose to stop. I'll say it again, if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of what we go through is self-inflicted. Hear me, saints of God. Just because the devil is real and wants to destroy us, that's, just, that's, that's a fact, he wants to destroy us. But it does not mean we have to make some of the decisions we make. Because you know who else is real? God is real. And he's on your side today. Am I right or wrong, anybody here? So the first thing we acknowledge and see here in our text is our very own self-infliction. We cause and make a lot of the things we go through worse than they have to be. Am I right or wrong? But secondly, in response to our very own self-infliction, we now see God's affliction in our very own lives. Here, it's in the word. Look at the text. Look at Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven away and became like an animal. Why? Because this is what it took to turn him around. 
I, I suggest to you today, brothers and sisters, that when you feel like throwing in the towel, you feel like giving up, you wonder where is God in the midst of all of your struggles, maybe he's allowing it to happen to you, to save you, to help you. I know you don't want to hear this, but it might be a good thing. You might be having problems on your job. It might be a good thing. You might be having problems at school. It might be a good thing. You might be having problems in your home. It might be a good thing. You might be having financial problems. It might be a good thing. You might be having problems in your body. Sickness has struck you down. It might be a good thing. You might be having relationship problems. It might be a good thing if you really think about it. The reason we are all here today is because every Everything is not going well for us in our lives and we realize we can't do it all by ourselves we need help from a higher power any problem that you face today that causes you to come to Jesus is a good thing as a matter of fact sometimes he will cause them to rise in your life so that you can look to him You see, brothers and sisters, the problem with Nebuchadnezzar is that he had everything he thought he needed. And everything was going well for him. As a result, he didn't feel the need to have God in his life. Uh, 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 And it wasn't until he lost everything and his power was taken away from him that he looked up toward heaven. It's because God was trying to save him. This is how he works. Uh, Sometimes he will cause or allow bad things to happen to you in order to save you. Uh, Look at Jonah. God gave him direction uh, to head to Nineveh. But Jonah, hard-headed Jonah, said, no, uh, I'm not going. Uh, And he jumps on a ship uh, and heads to Tarshish. Uh, So what does God do? Uh, A storm arises uh, on the sea. Uh, Jonah ends up being thrown overboard uh, and ends up in the belly of a giant fish for three days. Why? Because God was trying to save him. Understand, brothers and sisters, that right now, understand that God's response to our self-infliction is to bring about affliction in our lives. But the purpose is if the purpose of it is not our destruction, but our deliverance. Somebody ought to say amen. Brothers and sisters, as we see our very own self-infliction, then we see God's response by bringing affliction into our lives. But the good news is that in spite of it all, yet we also see God's restoration in our lives, that there is still hope for all of us today. Somebody ought to say amen. The text says in verse 23, chop down the tree and destroy it, yet leave the stump with its roots in the ground. In other words, do not completely destroy the whole tree. By leaving the stump in the ground, it promises ultimate restoration. It's a sign of hope. As one writer says, he will hewn down or cut down the tree that, so that only a stump remains, indicating perhaps that all is not lost and that there is still some hope even for a proud king like Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, who at this time thought of himself as God and even declared himself to be God, but yet and still God did not destroy him completely. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, not only did he not destroy Nebuchadnezzar completely, but by placing a band of iron and bronze around the stump, it signified that God even protected his kingdom. (laughs) For you see, the word for band here in its original language is esur, which figuratively refers to the restoration of the kingdom. (laughs) So in other words, in the midst of all of Nebuchadnezzar's mess, God 
God was still blessing him and watching over his kingdom. You miss your shout. Better yet, some of us didn't even recognize your shout because we're too busy pretending like we didn't used to be a mess, like we don't still got some mess with us, and some of us are just plain and simply still a mess, and a few of us are just a hot mess, but I'm so glad today that in the midst of all of my mess that God did not cut me off completely, and not only that, but he still keeps blessing me. I thank him for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way. I thank him because I had food on my table and clothes on my back. I thank him for allowing me to have a place to lay my head and to call home. I thank him for all of his many blessings. I thank him for being a God of love. I thank him for being a God of grace. I thank him for being a God of mercy. I thank him for being a God of patience. I thank him for being a God of peace. And I thank him for being a God of second chances. Understand today, brothers and sisters, that all of us at some point used to be just like Nebuchadnezzar. We were doing things our own way. We were living life the way we wanted to. We thought that we had total control and we were heading straight down a self-made path of destruction. But that's when God stepped in and said, cut down the tree, but leave the stump and its roots in the ground. He said, brothers and sisters, leave the roots in the ground. <laughs> Listen. If you know anything about trees, you know that the root is there to provide an anchor. So in other words, uh, even though the tree has been cut down, uh, yet all of it cannot be thrown away uh, because its anchor still holds. Uh, likewise, the roots uh, also provide access to minerals and other elements in the soil uh, that help give life to the tree. Uh, listen, brothers and sisters, you and I uh, are just like the stump uh, and Jesus is the root and he's our anchor and he holds us steady and he gives us life this is why the messenger said cut down the tree and destroy it but leave the stump with its roots in the ground because Jesus wanted to give Nebuchadnezzar a new life built upon him as his anchor he wanted to get rid of the old life full of pride and arrogance and give him a new life full of humility I'm so glad to be able to say today uh, that just like Jesus fixed up Nebuchadnezzar, that Jesus is still in the fixing business. Uh, I'm glad that he will cut down the areas in our life uh, that are unlike him, uh, and then as our anchor and life, he'll build us back up today. There's hope for all of us today when Jesus is our anchor. There may be somebody here today who feels cut down in life. I want you to know that you are not cut out because Jesus is your anchor. You may be cut down by drugs, but you're not cut out. You may be cut down by alcohol, but you're not cut out. You may be cut down by fornication, but you're not cut out. You may be cut down by adultery, but you're not cut out. You may be cut down by pornography. You're not cut out. You may be cut down on your job. You're not cut out. You may be cut down. Even in your home, uh, you're not cut out. You may be cut down by sickness. You're not cut out. You may be cut down by despair. You're not cut out. You may be cut down by hopelessness. Uh, you're not cut out. You may be cut down by sadness. Uh, you're not cut out. You may be cut down by loneliness. Uh, you're not cut out. You may be cut down by mental health issues. Uh, you're not uh, cut out. Young people, you may be cut down at school. Uh, you're not cut out. Uh, you may be cut down by peer pressure. You're not cut out. Uh, you may be cut down by suicidal thoughts. Uh, you're not cut out. You may be cut down by the wrong crowd. You are not cut out. How many of you believe that today? That you're not cut out. Well, let me tell you why you're not cut out. It's because they tried to cut Jesus out. 
when they nailed him to an old rugged cross and he died for your sins and for mine. They laid him in a borrowed tomb and he laid there all night Friday and he laid there all day Saturday and he laid there all night Saturday but they couldn't cut him out because early Sunday morning he got up. I said he got up with all power in his hands. God is not dead. He that keepeth Israel is not dead. He that breathed life into man is not dead. He that makes a way out of no way is not dead. He that heals the sin sick soul is not dead. He that paid it all is not dead. But he's alive forevermore. And because he's alive, you can have life today because he's alive. You can have peace today because he's alive. You can have joy today because he's alive. You can be set free today because he's alive. You can have victory today because he's alive. You can make it today. That's why the songwriter says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives all of my fear is gone because I know who holds my future and life is worth the living just because he lives there's hope today because he lives so don't give up don't give in don't throw in the towel. Don't wave the white flag. Don't ever quit. But hold on today. You may be cut down, but you're not cut out. Because Jesus, your anchor, still holds. The songwriter says, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the savior love i'm so thankful i can't speak for you but i'm so thankful that we have an anchor and it still holds won't he do it won't he hold you up won't he fight your battles won't he stand with you won't he give you joy in sorrow won't he give you hope for tomorrow hallelujah in this place thank you jesus What a mighty God we serve. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Even though Nebuchadnezzar, y'all hearing me? Was a pagan king. God still considered him as his child and he loved him and I want you to know brothers and sisters that he loves each and every one of us here today how many of you believe that just play softly and I want you to know that as soon as Nebuchadnezzar looked up toward heaven and praised and worshiped and honored God. Everything. Did you hear me? Not some things, not a little, not most things. Everything was restored back to him. Ellen White goes on to say that Listen to what Ellen White says. This once proud monarch had become a humble child of God. 
the tyrannical, overbearing ruler, a wise and compassionate king. He who had defied and blasphemed the God of heaven now acknowledged the power of the Most High and earnestly sought to promote the fear of Jehovah and happiness of his subjects. You may be wondering, brothers and sisters, how could this have happened? It's because God dealt with his pride. In other words, God dealt with his thing. And we've all got a thing. The question today is, brothers and sisters, do you want God to deal with that thing or issue in your life that is keeping you from completely following him. Are you hearing me today? Understand what I'm asking, brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about church attendance. Because we can come to church and still be far away from God. Are you hearing me? Do you want God? It's personal time. Don't worry about anybody else. Everybody got a thing. Everybody got their thing. Do you want God? No matter what it is, he can deal with it. The question is, do you want him to? Do you want God to deal with that thing in your life? That's holding you back. That's keeping you from going all the way forward with Jesus. That's keeping you from completely following him. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I believe the Lord is coming. I don't know when that day or, or the hour, but we know he's coming. And God forbid any of us end up lost because we would not let go of that thing. That thing that's unhealthy for us. That thing that's bringing misery and pain in our life. How many know that the, the very things we hold on to aren't even benefiting our life? They're not even blessing. They're not even building. They're not even growing us. It's, it's actually destroying us. So on this day, now is the opportunity for someone to make a decision for Christ. To say, Lord, on this thing, on this day, I'm not worried about anybody else's thing, but I know I got a thing. And on this day, this first appeal is for that individual. You don't need to be rebaptized. You don't need to join the church again. But you know you've been struggling. But you know you can do better. You can be better. And you want to say on this day, God, I'm tired of fumbling the ball sometimes. I know I can be better. I know I need to be more consistent. I'm tired of giving in to this thing. And you're here now. Whoever you are, but that's you, I just want you to stand with me now at this time. Don't worry about anybody else, brothers and sisters. You got your own thing. They got their thing. Amen, my sister. Anyone else? Amen. You're saying, God, on this day, I, I just want to be more. I, I know I can be better. I can do better. I want to be more consistent. I'm tired. 
I don't need to rejoin the church. I, I've been in the church, but I, I can be better. Help me to stop fumbling. God bless you. This next appeal is for that individual who even needs to go a step further. Maybe for you to get the victory. It's not about just saying, let let me do better. I need to get better. I I know. But for you, it, it needs to be a complete surrender to God. Maybe this is the first time for you. Maybe you did it a while, a long time ago, but you walked away. And your things have been knocking you up, beating you up, struggling from day to day. But on this day, you recognize that the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart. And you want to say, God, I'm coming back to you. God, I'm coming to you for the first time. Maybe you need to be in the next baptism. You know we're having one at the beach on next Sabbath. We even have the pool that's ready now. But you want to say on this day, God, I want to give my life to you now. I want to be in that next baptism. I want victory on this day. I'm tired of my things, my issues, winning in my life. But I want you to be the head of my life now, God. You're here now. You say, I give my life to you. Just raise that hand wherever you are. Whether you're seated or standing, just raise the hand so we can acknowledge you. My elder's going to come to you. I want you to just fill out a card. Just raise your hand. God bless you. I see another hand over here. Right here. God bless you. Just raise that hand if you're saying on this day. Just fill out that card and give it back to the elders and we're going to close in prayer. Just raise it. There's time for you. You may have come burdened today worrying about that thing, but you can leave today victorious knowing that Jesus is going to get Jesus got it, that God's got it. As you surrender it to him today. Doesn't mean it's not going to be a struggle sometime. But your victory is sure as you rely on Jesus. How many believe that today? So whoever you are, just raise that hand as we're filling out the cards now. Before we pray, if you want to say, God, I surrender my life to you now. And I want to be baptized. And start a new walk, ensuring victory over my things, my issues. We're going to pray soon. Let's collect all of the cards. We want to make sure that no one falls through the crack. But while they're writing, You can make a decision now. How many are thankful for the God that we serve? A God that's so patient with us that even when we don't get it right, he still loves us. Even a wicked, evil, pagan king like Nebuchadnezzar, God still wanted to save him. And all the more, he wants to save you today. That's good news, amen? Amen. No matter what your thing is, we've all got a thing. But God specializes in healing, in dealing with our things, our issues. And we thank him today. Hallelujah. Have we collected all of the cards? Elders? We got them all? Elder Chandler? One more. Just being filled out. Did I see another hand go up? Amen. Amen. We got the cards. We have them. We have them all. 
Amen. We have them all. You got them all. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because there's no one like you. We thank you, God, for being our God. We thank you for being an amazing God. And I thank you, God, for still being in the salvation business. Father, we thank you because there's no one like you. We thank you, God, because you love us unconditionally. We're thankful, God, that just like for Nebuchadnezzar, you're not turned off by our issues and things that we struggle with. You only want to save us. We thank you for your salvation power. And first, God, we just lift up those who have stood today, God, acknowledging the fact that even though they have, they have given their life to you in a walk with you, that they still struggle. And on this day, God, I want to make the commitment through your power that their thing will not lo no longer have victory over them. And no longer just be continuous walk one day forward, one day backwards, one day, two day, uh, two days forward, two days backwards. But on this day, we're seeking you for strength and victory over that thing. And then, God, we thank you for those who have taken their stand, going an even step further on this day, declaring God that they want to be baptized. Declaring on this day that they are starting a new walk with you. They're tired of the struggles of this world. The issues and stuff they're dealing with. The things and shortcomings. But on this day, they're making a commitment to you. We thank you, God, because you're still in the salvation business. We thank you, God, that... Just like you did for Nebuchadnezzar, we're thankful that you will go through great lengths, God, just to try and save us. And we thank you for those who've made those decisions today. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. We love you. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, at the conclusion of this service... Uh, we're going to ask if you would just stay by for just a couple of minutes. Uh, Elder, uh, a couple of announcements, including um, Pastor Goff's going to come. You know, we are at that time of year. This is for our members where we're selecting officers uh, to serve new officers. And so we want to select a large committee today that will in turn select the nominating committee who will select the officers. So it won't take, a, it's not a long process, but Pastor Goss is going to come at the conclusion of our service, and we want you to just stay by to be a part of that process. Amen? Amen. And then please join us downstairs for lunch and fellowship as we continue to celebrate um, their 62 years of marriage. Four, five. More about Jesus. M number two forty five. More about Jesus.
Now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. to be seated for just another 10 minutes or so. The only person who should leave is one who may not be a member of the church. <laughs> 